gonna be showing you guys my updated blowout routine from start to finish. Also including how I preserve my blowout at nighttime so it looks good for like five days. took a shower so my hair is wet and ready to be blow dried. I have obviously done like a million blowout routines at this point but things do change along the way. New techniques and all that stuff. You do not need to go and buy all of the products in this video. The main thing that I want to be taken away from this video is the technique and stuff that is being used. You do not need to spend a million dollars on products to get a good blowout but I am including the products I'm using because I've tested out so many and and I think I truly have found like the best ones. And I know I'm gonna get asked on what products I use. I have not put anything in my hair. I just shampooed, conditioned. Also, I just wanna mention that I do use a microfiber hair towel. Further protect my hair. Just normal towels can really like roughen up the cuticle of your hair and make your hair super frizzy. So going in with a microfiber towel also just helps with frizz. I'm first gonna be going in with leave-in conditioner. I go in with leave-in conditioner anytime I wash my hair because my mids and ends are always extremely dry. No matter if I air dry or blow dry, it doesn't matter. I've just always had an issue with my ends being dry. When I'm posting this, it is November right now. The weather is just more on the dry side. My hair always struggles during this time of year and we don't want dry hair because if your hair is dry, it's more prone to breaking off. So I go with leave-in conditioner just as an extra step to keeping my hair hydrated. This next step is a little controversial. I see so many people arguing on if it's good or not and that is going in with hair oil before you are going to be using heat on your hair. Some people compare it to like frying food and like that means you're gonna fry your hair but this oil in specific has heat protectant. I take like four drops of that and apply that to my mids and ends and this hair oil can be a little bit heavier and I do have fine hair so I don't go in with like a bunch. I always brush in like all of the products as well because I feel like it really makes it get on all the hair strands and you want to be getting like, all of the benefits from the products you're using, especially if you're using more expensive products. The main reason why I'm going in with hair oil on wet hair though is it really, really is just another step in helping with my hair not frizzing up when it's dry. I also just want to point out I am using this brush called the Unbrush and this thing went like super viral on TikTok and I thought it was going to be complete bullshit and it's actually pretty great. It's not like, oh my gosh, you need to go run and buy this if you already have a detangling brush, but if you're looking for a detangling brush this is definitely the best one that I have ever used and I've used the tangle teaser the wet brush and so I always put those two things in my hair but now we're going to be getting into the products that I put in my hair specifically for when I blow dry my hair this is my natural hair it's not super crazy wavy but there is a wave pattern there and you know my hair has always held curl better ish even though I do have fine hair meaning the actual strand of hair is thinner my hair just like always has held curls and stuff better and I think that's because I have have a little bit of texture in it because I have a wave pattern. I personally don't really prefer to go in with mousses and you know holding sprays. If I had to use a product though to make my hair stay, my number one is the Amica Brooklyn Bombshell Blowout Spray. This stuff goes a long, long way. You do not need a lot of this stuff. It's just adding texture in your hair. That is my all time favorite, but my second favorite, like if I had to use a mousse, is the Perfect Body Mousse by Amica as well. Also, nothing in this video is sponsored and I bought every single one of these products with my own money just so you guys know that moving on to my favorite product I do not blow dry my hair without this product color wow dream coat I have actually used this stuff wrong in the past I recently figured out how to use it where it's like, oh, it's actually working now. And I'm gonna be showing you guys that obviously. If you live in a humid climate, if your hair is just more coarse and is prone to frizzing, you know, you're just turning into a poof ball. This really, really helps. I go in. I've seen a lot of people get this product and like, this literally didn't do anything. One of the biggest mistakes is not using enough of this product. It's totally understandable. This product is more like on the pricey side. You have to like, look Loki go in with like a lot to get it to work. You have to like go in. I cannot like say that enough. I don't section. I just lift my hair up and let pieces go down. Oh, that was directly in my eye. And I spray that from root to tip.
This is just like the normal version. There is a curly version for like coarser hair. I think everyone watching this has at least heard of the word silicones. You know, there's some people that are like super against silicones and I am not one of those people. As long as you're clarifying your hair every two weeks, like two or three times a month, you're fine. And whenever I mention that Dream Coat has heat protectant in it, all the comments are no it doesn't. Pretty much anything with silicone in it is actually acting as a heat protectant because it's putting a coating around your hair and protecting your hair. But I do have a favorite heat protectant and this is the Maria Nilla Heat Cream Spray. And I don't spray it directly in my hair because it's like an actual cream. It's not like a liquid at all. And I kind of wish they would just make it in a pump. I do like to go in with this just on my mids and ends just to add a little bit more protection because I'm a hair care freak, you know? So that is it for the product prepping. Now we're gonna actually get into blow drying my hair. You never want to go in on this wet of hair with a blow drying brush like this or the Dyson Air Wrap. You actually want your hair to be like 80-ish percent dry and that also just depends on every single hair type. You obviously don't want to completely dry your hair when you have curly hair because then your hair is gonna be like freaking huge and a big giant puffball. And you do want your hair to be more on the wet side when you're sleeking it down. But if you have like straighter hair, you want your hair to be more on the dry side when going in with these tools. I am just going to very quickly rough dry my hair with a normal blow dryer. I do tend to use more expensive tools. You do not need an expensive freaking blow dryer to blow dry your hair. The reason why there's such a huge price difference in heating tools, some of them are $10 and some of them are $700. One with Dyson is a name brand thing. It's Dyson. They're gonna rack up the price because their name is Dyson. The main reason is the quality of the product. We're talking materials that are being used and mainly the temperature that they are regulating. So if you're using like a $20 cone air blow dryer from Target and you're blow drying your hair and it says it's like 250 degrees, it might be at like 400 degrees. But if I'm using the Dyson Air Wrap and it says it's at 250, it is very much at 250. I literally had no idea that was why for the longest time. So that's why I always say that in these videos. If you're using heat protectant and you're not using heat more than like once or twice a week, you're honestly gonna be fine. But no matter what, if you're using heat on your hair, you're gonna get damaged. It doesn't matter if it's a $700 tool. It doesn't matter if you're using heat protectant. There's going to be more damage than not using heat. I filmed this last year, but I feel like it's so important to show. I went to a hotel. I had brought my Dyson blow dryer because I knew I was gonna wash my hair. But there actually was a blow dryer there. And I looked it up and this blow dryer was literally like $10. And I wanted to show it's all about the technique. It doesn't matter if the blow dryer is $500 or $10. This is the Dyson and this is the $10 one. It does the same exact thing. It's all about pointing it down and knowing how to sleek down the hair properly. No matter what blow dryer you are using, you need a nozzle. You need that air concentrated exactly where you're going because you need it to be pointed down. You're like sealing the cuticle. That's what's gonna give you shine. It's all about the technique. Dream Coat is activated by heat. Another huge mistake that I see people use with this product is they're not using a hot enough setting. I usually use the lowest setting on all of my tools. People are using specifically flat irons to get the super shiny, like waterproof hair from Dream Coat. And you know, I was looking more into it. It's because you have to use more heat. You're wasting your money if you're not doing the correct things when using Dream Coat. There's no point in even using it if you're not gonna activate it properly. That is also why I go in with a little bit of more heat protectant because I know I'm gonna be using more heat. When doing this, I am doing the second one because it's hot enough and then I'm gonna be using the hottest setting when we go into using other tools. When you're using a blow dryer and a round brush, take your round brush, pull your hair back, and go like this. And it's going to give that root bump and it's gonna give you way more volume. 
My hair is still damp. I would call this about what, like 80, 90% dry. I have an entire routine dedicated to using a blow dryer and a round brush because it is very different than using blow dryer brushes and the Dyson Airwrap. I am going in with the Dyson Airwrap. If you do not own the Dyson Airwrap, still think that you can take a lot from this video. I'm gonna be talking about how to put in rollers and how to make your hair not get frizzy from them and stuff like that. I do use the Dyson Airwrap 99% of the time or I use the Shark one, but I bought this one tested out and their barrels are longer. My hair has gotten way longer than it was and this one just fits my hair on it so much better. First, I'm gonna show you how I would do it with a blow dry round brush. This one was literally like $18 and it's by Revlon. We're going on the highest setting. I do everything towards my face except for these pieces right here. I do that away from my face. First section is just taken right behind my ears. I take the piece of hair, I place the round brush under it, I wrap around the mids and ends, and you're gonna slowly, slowly, slowly bring it down. You can completely let it out and do a few passes if your hair is more frizzy. Once you've gotten the sleekness that you like, you bring it on the ends, you wrap, you wrap, you wrap, and then you wrap it back up, you let it sit for a second, you hold the top, and you let it out in a curl. And you're not gonna brush out that curl, you're gonna just let it lay down. I'm just gonna let it sit for a few seconds. And let it out. And now you have a curl. Taking the same size piece on the other side and I'm gonna be showing you with the Dyson Airwrap. Going in with the hotter setting, it's always painful for me to do this. I will say I've actually been doing this for five-ish months now and I have not seen a difference in my ends, my hair's health. If I've gotten more split ends or anything like that, like my hair has not changed in a negative way. With the Dyson Airwrap, I do like to elevate my hair like this. Before I wrap it up, I let it sit right here and smooth out the ends because one thing with the Dyson is if you instantly roll it all up, your ends can be kind of like frazzled. I figured out it's because when you do that, they like pretty much crimping like frizz into your ends. I always pump it with cold air at the end. It helps give it shine and helps it lock into place. Then I let it out and obviously you can see that there's quite a bit of a difference. This is going to fall. A lot of people when they get the Dyson they're under the impression that it's like a curling iron. It's not. The whole entire point of the Dyson is supposed to give you a blowout. This is not supposed to stay here. This is supposed to fall down to here. But there are ways that you can keep more of a curly blowout. And if you're going in with a round blow drying brush, it's not going to be as curly as a Dyson or a curling iron. And it is fairly quick. A few weeks back when I filmed my Halloween Get Ready With Me, I did film the entire time I was doing blowout. I did my blowout routine with my rollers and rough drying my hair in 32 minutes. Like that is absolutely insane to me. That is also why I use the Dyson because it's, it's quick as hell. We're gonna speed through doing this section and I'm not putting rollers on the bottom section. Now that my hair is more on the long side, bottom section falls the most for me. It's just like more rollers on my head and it looks exactly the same if I don't put rollers in or if I do. Bottom section is done. I've been running into this new fun issue that my hair isn't holding as well as it used to because of my hair's length. Now that it's getting longer, it's getting weighed down more. So we're gonna go in with texture spray. This is the IGK Beach Club Touchable Texture Spray. And I love this stuff, it's not crunchy. I like going in with texture spray rather than a hairspray because hairspray is just, it's a no-go. I hate hairspray. Holding it far away. But oh, this stuff like, weirdly smells like pepper to me. 
I will sometimes just kind of go like this. You know, you can feel the texture. It obviously you can feel a little product, but it's not like crunchy, you know, because I hate that. We're gonna throw those back there. Now we're gonna move on to our next section. I work in three sections. Bottom section, side sections, mohawk middle section. I go right where my curtain bangs kind of start and I go straight back. I do one side at a time, just so it's less hair in my face. We start, why? Why is that happening, Mr. Toilet? Now we are going in with rollers. I recently got a new pack of rollers because my cats love Velcro rollers. They have quite literally made all of them disappear. You do not need to get bougie Velcro rollers. I'm telling you, all Velcro rollers are the same. I tried the dry bar Velcro rollers. Those are the exact same thing as any rollers on Amazon. I don't even know how they get away with selling it for more expensive. I am first just gonna take front slice right here. Rule of thumb with rollers, the higher up your hold your roller the more volume you're gonna get because it's gonna sit higher up and it's redirecting your hair away from your roots so when you take them out you're gonna have a nice little bell right there and you're gonna be looking like a voluminous 90s supermodel the lower you hold it the less volume you're gonna have how to put in a roller have your hair angled up if you want volume in your roots you get your roller one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is that they do this super tightly like this and they're shoving their hair in the teeth. And then you take out your rollers and your hair is frizzy. What happens when you put your rollers in super tightly, your ends are making itty bitty little zigzags in the teeth. So then when you take it out, there's itty bitty little zigzags that you can't really see. And it's pretty much just creating frizz. Barely glide it to your ends and you roll it around and you do not want to be pressing your hair into it too much. It is going to grab your hair because that's what Velcro rollers do. And you're gonna roll it, roll it, roll it. And there it is. You can put them higher up, lower. This is where I like them to be. You can use any clips. Okay. I like going in with these clips. I have a new way of putting these in there. Instead of putting it like inside the roller like that, feed it into your hair on the roller, like in between the hair and the Velcro roller, and obviously to your head. You try that, that thing is not going anywhere. This does not crimp my hair at all. A lot of people say Velcro rollers rip out so much of my hair, and it's usually because you stuck them in also too tightly. link the exact rollers that I got but the ones that I use most of the time on my whole head are I'm pretty sure they're an inch so this one piece I do away from my face all the rest is going to be towards my face off to our other side section I'm doing the same exact thing Another reason that I forgot to mention why I blow dry my hair under, if you have breakage or new growth that is coming in or a bunch of layers, it looks like you have a bunch of flyaways just everywhere. All those little hairs are going like this, like under. So then they're all being hidden. If you went out and were flicking everything up, all those flyaways would be flicking up on your entire head. Now we're on to our last section and I'm just gonna start at the back. I'm going to be blow drying them like this. And technically it is going like away from my face, but it's going under. For the top section, you want to angle it like a unicorn. And that is going to give you volume. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a little hack on how I fit more rollers on the top of my head. I am gonna stack this roller on top of this roller. I don't have enough room. Clip them together like that.
I have an entire video on my curtain bangs, on how I trim them, and how I style them. And I'm actually currently growing them out so they're really long because I want long curtain bangs again. Like just taking a million years because bangs just take forever to grow out. I split my bangs in half and I roll the back section away from my face and the front section towards my face. The most important things with bangs is you really want to make sure that this is like going straight up or you're going to have no volume right in the front of your face. Now I'm going to take a little bit of texture spray. Perfect time for my rollers to sit is three hours. The main like rule of thumb with rollers though is you just want them to not be warm. They want them to be cool to the touch. You can let them sit for like 10 to 30 minutes. I would say an hour is like the least amount of time that I'll let them sit, but I'm gonna go let them sit for three hours. It is almost three hours later and it's finally time to take all of it out, two fingers in and wrapping it in the direction And then instantly when I take it out, you can see that this is like going straight out and that's exactly what we want because that is giving volume. We haven't even done this section and you can already see all the volume. texture spray in there if you want, but I kind of like it like this. And I'm going to add one more product to my hair. I like to add in a little bit of hair oil. This is my favorite hair oil to go in with. Right when I take my hair out and it's all curly, I don't want to like sleek it down. So I've been like obsessed with hair oil sprays. These two are my favorites. The Lonzo one gives way more shine and I'm sad because the Fable and May one was just discontinued. I'm gonna go in with the Lonzo one. I just spray it and then I just scrunch so I don't take away from the curl. It just adds a little bit more shine and hydration. My bangs are doing a little bit of wonky things because they're growing out, so just ignore that. But I love my hair length right now. I can't wait until it gets right here though. We just put literal hours into this technically, okay? So how do I preserve this? It's, it's a big question. Next clip is gonna be how I sleep with my hair when I want to preserve my blowout. I just finished my skincare for the night. Now we're going to put my hair in my heatless, curler thing. First I'm taking this night serum and this just really keeps my ends hydrated and it feels like very silicone-y right when you go in with it but the beauty in it is when you wake up your hair is like so so soft. And I'm brushing my hair through, taking a little bit of hair oil, gliding that on my mids and ends. Even though I have a silk pillowcase, I always sleep with a silk cap. And a lot of times I'll just, you know, put this on, put my hair in it and call it a day. If I wanna keep the blowout and have a curlier blowout where my ends are beveled in and stuff, I need one of these. Flip my head over, gathering up all this hair. I'm putting it in a claw clip while being like this to make it easier to wrap around. And you're going to wrap your hair around it. Now this can be so tedious and time consuming if you have as many layers as I do. And it can be really annoying because you don't want your ends to get crinkled because then they can get frizzy. And once I get to this part, I take the cloth up out. I'm going to 
put the ends together like this. Take a scrunchie and tie that. And there you go. You can spray it with water and stuff beforehand. I don't like to go in with water because it can just make my hair frizz. Sleeping with a silk cap just really ensures that it's not gonna be coming out and that no frizz is gonna happen. So yeah, this is what I look like pretty much every single night. You will see it is so worth it in the morning. having a blowout done you just have to do it a little tighter it's like a perfect easy way to get your blowout to last like i'll do it again tonight and then tomorrow night i usually don't and then it's getting into the days where i might have to wash my hair again and so many people think i don't shower every day because i don't wash my hair every day y'all shower caps are a thing i like didn't even think of using a shower cap a long time ago i would just put my hair in a bun and it would get like weirdly moist in the shower and it felt disgusting so i just throw my hair in a super loose bun on the top of my head put the shower cap on take a shower and that's how i protect my hair on days that i'm not gonna wash it something that i think is definitely worth mentioning in this video even though it's not a hair care video with using dream coat and a lot of these products heat protectants the night serum they have a lot of silicones in them so you definitely want to make sure you're clarifying your hair once a week if you're using a lot i do once every two weeks because my hair does my hair doesn't need once a week using apple cider vinegar rinses helps exfoliate your scalp and that's an amazing cheaper option that i actually have started doing way more often it's been helping my hair stay super shiny and you know you need to clarify when your hair is dull it's being super weighed down even after when you wash your hair you feel like there's like stuff in your hair so it kind of feels like you haven't rinsed out all your conditioner sometimes an apple cider vinegar rinse isn't enough and you need like an actual clarifying treatment what i use is the redkin cleansing cream this stuff is seriously magical a lot of hairstylists use this this is what i use once every two weeks to keep my hair from not building up because i know i use like a shit ton of products i think that's everything if you want to you know go down a hair care journey i do have quite a few hair care videos i uploaded one not long ago and that is still my updated hair care routine like i'm still doing everything in that video right now i think the next updated thing i have to do now is my skincare routine i've been getting a bunch of questions on it because you guys have obviously noticed my skin is very clear and a few things have changed so i'm gonna get on that and i love you guys so much and i'll see you in the next one bye i don't know if you like the way i put my words together but i need you to stick with me just like some birds to feathers my life Bruce is scared.